What's up, YouTube? Alex here, AK Engine 95, bringing you guys another video. I'm not driving, don't worry, I'm being safe. Um, right before class, I got a good 10 minutes, I got here a little early, so I figured I'll drop a video for you guys. Um, today I'll be doing actually kind of a small series video. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, uh, yeah, there's some creeper behind me. Yeah, some weirdo. Yeah, I can see him in the video. Um, people have been asking me to do a video on side decking. Um, or not, not really a tutorial, but like my approach to side decking, or at least how I try to side deck. Um, and side decking honestly is a multifaceted question, which means there's a lot of different things. It's not like, and I, and I guess you could say there's a lot of different approaches, but, um, I think there's one, one general concept across the board that, um, holds true in all forms of side decking or whatever type of side decking you're talking about. Um, but there's also a bunch of different things I'd like to discuss when I talk about side decking. So in this video, I'll be talking about one of those things. Um, and that is submitting matchups. And by that, I mean, a lot of people have the tendency to try and include, uh, side deck cards in their main deck card, uh, in their main deck. Um, and by that, I mean, like they try to do more than is necessary, so to speak. Like your side deck is there for a reason. A lot of people tend to forget, um, that your main deck accomplishes one thing. Your side deck accomplishes another. Um, what your main deck may accomplish, your side deck may, um, may not accomplish and vice versa. And then on top of that, your side deck pretty much is supplemental to your main deck. Like whatever your main deck cannot accomplish, your side deck is there to alleviate the problem. So a lot of people have this tendency to throw in an extensive amount of side deck cards in their main deck, or they try to make it so that their main deck, um, solves every single problem across the board. And that's just not feasible. Um, and the reason I say that is because it's an archetype game right now. Konami pretty much has designed the game to where there's usually between two, three, maybe four competitive archetypes at a time. Um, and usually it's like a triangle format or a square format or, or something along those lines where um, one deck can beat everything else but it hasn't bad much up against something else. Or it can beat all but like two decks. Um, or, 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 some, or, or you guys get what I'm saying. Like one deck can't necessarily, its main deck cannot deal with every single deck. Sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. Sometimes it has... Um, a particular matchup where, for instance, I don't know, what's a good example? Uh, Necros, take Necros for example right now. Um, they typically want to play mirror match, but they don't necessarily have like an ultimate favorable mirror match. The reason I say that is because um, Teller Knights. Teller Knights are arguably the worst matchup for that deck, especially game one, game two, and three. Um, you have your side deck to deal with other backers. You have your Decrees, your Dinkos, but you're not necessarily going to be throwing all those cards in your main deck on the off chance you play that deck game one. Um, to basically hinder your chances at beating other decks because you can draw those cards dead against other decks. So there's no reason to be throwing extensive amounts of side deck cards. However, people have tried putting in Denkos, and Denkos can work across a lot of matchups, whereas Royal Decree isn't necessarily good against all those other matchups. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different things, like examples I could give you, but ba the basic point is a lot of people have, like, the, uh, a lot of people keep asking me why do their main decks keep struggling against decks that they're you know, siding well for, but then all of a sudden they start losing to everything else. Well, your main deck starts to be cluttered with all these other side deck cards and these pieces that are meant to be side deck pieces, exactly that. They're they're meant to deal with other matchups, whereas um, you, you pretty much should be centering your main deck on accomplishing what it does best um, and building it optimally for what it is, and then have your side deck alleviate any of those other problems. Sure, sometimes you can have side deck cards that can deal with multiple matchups. So those are okay. I mean, look at Vanity's Emptiness in the past. Um, it's been a main deck card. It's been a side deck card. Traditionally, right now, the last couple, like, year and a half, two years, it's been, ever since Dragon Roller format, it's pretty much been a, a main deck card. Um, but it's a card, in theory, that you could throw in your side deck right now. Right now, some Necros players are maining it. Some players are side decking it. Um, it's not necessarily the best going second, so some people are just cho choosing to side it in uh, against Mirror Match, um, or Tellers, or you know what have you, um, or Dolls even. Like it's not necessarily the best, so you can main it, you can side it. Um, but what I'm ba basically trying to uh, you know convey to you guys is don't pretty pretty much don't stuff your main deck with a ton of side deck cards that are unnecessary, um, or at least in those game ones because you take the risk of necessarily, not necessarily having those cards be as beneficial as you'd like them to be. Um, they may be a fantastic side deck card. They may be a great side deck card for the format. They may be something that everyone else is also running, but you chose to throw it in your main deck. Um, similarly, um, there's cards that could be in your main deck that people aren't necessarily running um, that could be used for a variety of matchups, a multitude of matchups, even even all the top decks. Um, Vanity Emptiness, like I said, that's another perfect example. Um, it could it could hit all the top decks right now. It could hit Shadows, it could hit Tellers, um, it could hit Necros, it could hit, you know, whatever other shit duck, whatever. 
Um, the point being is that um, you, I personally, for instance, right now, would not necessarily be side decking the card, uh, side decking that card, but that's just me, whether I was playing Necros or not. Um, so there's cards you pretty much have to evaluate. Um, is it something that necessarily contributes to dead draws against the majority of your matchups, or is it something that can contribute to a lot more wins in the majority of your matchups that you'll play against game one? Um, and that's the thing with side decking. Like I said, there's a lot of different things, but um, that's the first thing I wanted to touch on in this short video. Um, pretty much try to evaluate the efficiency of a card. Don't try to just splash it in just for one arbitrary scenario. Don't, you know, th don't just throw in a card in your deck just because it beats some particular setup that may happen or that could happen. Um, that's not necessarily efficient just because for all the other, you know, 999 scenarios out of a thousand um, that'll occur, um, it'll be it'll be detrimental to your strategy. It'll be detrimental to your hand. It'll make your bad hands worse. Um, and especially now, obviously the last, you know, several, the last, what, two formats, three formats that we've had, the, the draw five rule, um, it's even worse because when you're stuffing your deck with so many unnecessary cards for game one in particular, um, that obviously you have the risk of those being dead in those matchups, but you have an even greater chance of those cards being dead because you're only seeing five cards if your opponent makes you go first or you choose to go first or your deck, um, focuses on going first. Most decks should be going second right now. Um, I, I personally, like, even tellers, I, I'm shocked a lot of players still want to go first. Like, yes, you want to set up with your traps, but I'd rather just be able to see more cards. Um, but that's just an example. Obviously, that's, that's very subjective, I suppose. Um, but for all objective purposes, um, that's all I really wanted to touch on in this video. In the next video, I'll be talking about, um, actually constructing the side deck itself. Um, I mean, like I said, there's a lot of different things you can touch on. This is just my opinion. Um, this isn't by all means, like, some, some detailed... Uh, guide or anything along those lines, but I'll have I'll, I'll do my best to get you guys another video tomorrow. I'm really busy this week, so um, please uh, please deal with that. I suppose I'm trying to get you guys a video every single day. Um, so yeah, check out my other videos. Subscribe if you already haven't. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on side decking? What else would you like me to discuss on side decking? In the next side decking video, I figured I would be discussing um, building the side deck according to matchups because a lot of people just feel that when they throw cards in their side deck, they instantaneously go in against their bad matchup. Um, whether they're going first or second, um, and they instantly think that, you know, some cards don't necessarily go in against all their matchups. Sometimes, you know, this is a game of variance, this is a game of um, skill, this is a game of, you know, trial and error um, a lot of the time. So you guys have to keep that in mind. So I'll be talking about that in the next video. If you guys are interested in that, drop a like, drop a comment. Uh, I'll catch you guys next time. And uh, yeah, uh, check my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook fan page, all that stuff down in the description below. Um, check out my previous video. I'll have a link to it here if you guys didn't see it or one of my previous videos whichever i'm not sure which i'll probably have like one of the last couple of videos um so yeah peace out you guys and remember duelist limits like fears are often just an illusion